Mr. Chairman, like most Americans, I vividly remember the terrible mine tragedy at Crandall Canyon Mine in Utah last August as we waited day after day praying for the safety of the miners. We watched with great trepidation and sadness as three rescue workers were also killed attempting to save six miners who were trapped in a horrific mine collapse, all of whom, I am sad to say, did not survive. As a native Kentuckian and one who remembers vividly the mines, and particularly the whistles in the middle of the night indicating something had gone wrong at the mine, I was touched by that tragedy on a very personal level. It reminded me not only of the dangers of the profession, but also the important role of Congress to do all that we can to ensure their safety. I'm really shocked by some of the disturbing facts that were revealed after a just brief review of the evidence. The Crandall Canyon tragedy appears to have been preventable, and the rescue effort handed, uh, handled by the Mine Safety and Health Administration was tragically mismanaged. Following the tragedy, the New York Times and other publications reported that the Mine Safety and Health Administration failed to conduct the required inspections at 107 of the nation's 731 underground coal mines, and that the agency had misstated the number of inspections it had conducted, apparently to inflate its rate of completed inspections. How tragic that is when lives are at stake. Sadly, on the day of the accident, we saw that it was not NIOSH that was in charge of safety for the miners, but the owner, concerned only with his bottom line. Mr. Speaker, the evidence shows that despite significant progress over the last several decades, mining remains one of the most dangerous jobs in America. Mining fatalities occur at a rate more than seven times the average for all private industries far exceeding other dangerous occupations. Last year alone, 56 miners died on the job in the United States. Unfortunately, the tragedy at Crandall Canyon Mine was only the latest in a series of mine disasters, including three others last year, which combined, 19, combined claimed 19 lives. The Sago Mine Explosion, the fire at Aracoma Alma Mine, and the Kentucky Darby Mind. Madam Speaker, Congress owes it to the victims and to their families to perform a vigorous investigation to uncover what went wrong during these tragedies and how we can ensure that it never happens again. And I'm proud to say we stand here today resolute in our promise to enhance the safety of our mine workers, bringing forth a bill that will aim to fulfill that pledge. The Mine Improvement and New Emergency Response Act, or H.R. 2768, will help to prevent future disasters as well as improve our emergency response should another tragedy occur. We took an important step last Congress, enacting into law the Miner Act, a bill intended to prevent disasters such as Crandall Canyon. However, the administration made it crystal clear that it did not intend to go any further or move more quickly than required under the Miner Act, despite new evidence that quicker action is necessary to ensure the safety of miners. This bill empowers the Mine Safety and Health Administration to protect miners, providing them with a much needed authority to investigate mine operators and punish those that ignore or break the law. Unfortunately, too many persons on the Oversight Committee are mine owners themselves. But by providing the agency with subpoena authority, it will be permitted to stop production in mines that do not pay off delinquent accounts and to shut down mines that do not abate violations. That is certainly long overdue and should have been done at least a century ago. The bill also requires oversight and accountability by the agency demanding that MSHA take a move, a more active role in protecting the safety of the workers. For example, MSHA will be required to carefully review every plan for the notoriously dangerous practice known as retreat mining and to physically observe the process when it begins. In addition, they will be required to issue emergency response plans. Remember that the Crandall Canyon mine had already been mined 
before these miners started work. Furthermore, the bill is an important tool to enhance the safety and security of miners. It creates a minor ombudsman office to process incoming complaints and to assist whistleblowers while establishing solid ground rules for independent investigations of multiple fatality mine accidents. In addition, it requires improved communications and tracking systems and cuts the coal dust exposure the limit in half, which is so important because I learned yesterday from Chairman Miller that black lung disease, one of the most awful ways to live and die, is on the upsurge. While this legislation takes groundbreaking steps to protect the miners, we still have a long way to go to ensure that mining no longer carries the ominous description as one of America's most deadly professions. More must be done to reduce long-term health risks facing the miners, such as black lung disease, which can be just as deadly as on-the-job tragedies. We must expand on the Miner Act until tragedies like Crandall Canyon are a thing of the past and the death toll ceases to rise. Many oversight hearings conducted by the Committee on Education and Labor concluded that not only were the recent mining disasters preventable, but the re risk of repeated incident is still very real. I would like to take a moment to commend the House Education and Labor Committee under the wonderful leadership of Chairman George Miller. It was Mr. Miller who leapt into action to take on this immense responsibility. This represents a marked change in the way that Congress has been operating following last year's election. Since Democrats regained control of the House and Senate last November, we have once again begun to use two of the most basic tools in our legislative toolbox. They are oversight and investigation, and today's bill is no exception. The bill shows our commitment to proactively advocate for working men and women especially the victims and families of disasters like that that occurred at Crandall Canyon last August. We must do everything we can to ensure that every single miner is able to return home at the end of the day to their family, and I am proud to say that it is at its heart the true intention of this bill. And I reserve the balance of my time.